Hello, my name is Donald Cruz. I'm the reference librarian here at the Delhi branch of the Public Library of Cincinnati and Hamilton County. Today I'm interviewing Mr. Earl W. Isles. It's the 8th of November, 2006. We are here at the Delhi Township branch of the Public Library of Cincinnati and Hamilton County. My cameraman uh, and the brother of our uh, interviewee is Mr. Jerry Isles. So we're going to get started with that. Jerry, hand me the that biographical thing. Thank you. Earl, thank you so much for agreeing to do this and coming here. We're glad to have you with us. Um, Earl has a very interesting history, so I'm going to uh, kind of prompt you on that. Uh, Earl is a veteran of the Second World War. He uh, served uniquely in both the Merchant Marine and in the United States Navy. Earl, how did uh, I understand you're a lifelong native Cincinnatian, is that correct? That's correct. How did uh, you come to join first the Merchant Marine and then the Navy? What sent you to sea? Uh, well, shortly after the war started, I knew I was going to have to go someplace. So I scouted around and I found out in the Merchant Marine you made more money and the uh, service was altogether different. It was actually it was a civilian job. And at that time, I, I looked into wages and I think the, I think you started at $75 a month. And I think there was a hundred dollar a month war bonus plus port bonuses and- This is in the Merchant Marine. Right, and, and war zone bonuses. I thought that is for me. Why go in the Navy for $25, $30 a month when I can go here? So that's, that's how I got in the Merchant Marine. Were you able to sign up uh, for the Merchant Marine here in Cincinnati, or did you have to go somewhere else for that? Uh, I, I signed up here, I believe, yeah. Then, then, and then, did, I, and then I went to uh, Sheepshead Bay, New York, which was the Merchant Marine Training Center, right? And I took boot camp, comparable to Navy boot camp, and from there, I went to uh, signed up and went to different ships. When, uh, when you, how long do you remember how long the training was at Sheepshead Bay? I can guess. I think it was about six or seven weeks. About the same, I think, at that time that the Navy was. Okay. It, did you um, did you have to decide from the beginning whether you wanted to work on deck or whether you wanted to be in, in the engine crew, or did you get training for both? No, you didn't. Uh, we didn't get a whole lot of training for any of it. Of course, you went as ordinary seamen, or which was the deck hand, or a wiper, which was in a machine shop, whatever. I think you you, you learned that after you got there. You as you went on the ship. Yeah, it was kind of. Well, like a break in apprenticeship program type. So you learn water safety and yeah, well, how, yeah, how to yeah. get away from a sinking yeah. ship. And yeah, well, you learn a lot of that in, in boot training. Right. Yeah. So you finished that. Um, do you know, well, let's see, that was in 41, 40, 41, 42? That was 42. Okay. Yeah. I, middle of 42. Okay. And so you. When, obviously, you were in New York since you're talking about Sheepshead Bay, which yeah. is New York, and so you went. To, you were assigned to a ship. How did you? How did the, the Merchant Marine? How did the guy get a ship? Uh, the when world? they had sign-up orders, you went to different places and you signed up. And, and put at, the, your, at the Union Hall. Or? Yeah, put your name on a list, and as your name come up, you got you, you you could go to a certain ship or refuse and wait for another one, but you only had a certain amount of time that you that you had to get onto a ship. Right. Or you was going to get in problems. Okay. Which I knew so you uh, signed on as an ordinary seaman, and you believe the first ship you were on was a thing called the Sierra Gordo? Yes. Is that the first I, ship I you were on? I think that's the first one, yeah. Uh, which is on the paper here. Yeah. Um, and where was that, what, what ship, where was that ship going? Wait, first, what kind of ship was it? It was a tanker. Okay. We hauled uh, gasoline, mostly high octane gasoline. And I went to, I think I signed, I went, they sent me to Newport uh, News, Virginia. Okay. Is where I signed on to that ship. And then we went, uh, I think we went to the, down to Gulf of Mexico, down to Texas and loaded up and went to England. Now, did the tankers travel, did you travel in convoy across, yeah. when you went across the Atlantic? Yes. Okay. Yeah. 
I think uh, there was, well, they run 40, 50 ships in a convoy. But that's where we, uh, where we run into the, all the problems with the, with the ship and. Uh, Mechanical problems or? Well, yes, we run aground and. Uh, oh, the, the captain who was tipsy a little bit. Well, that's what we said, but I don't know whether you should put this on there. <laughs> but, but we don't have his name. I guess it's okay. I know his name. <laughs> One of the things amazing that I remember, but uh, no, we were, uh, yeah, then you never knew where you was going. They never told you. There was always rumors, gossip about you was going here, there, and everywhere. And we thought we were on our way to Russia. Well, on, the, on the Murmansk run. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, because we were going in that direction. Well, when we got up around the northern end of Scotland, instead of going, staying on, on the route to, uh, to Murmansk, we turned around and come south. So right away, there was rumors about an invasion. I thought, uh-oh, here we go. So that's when we, uh, we were, we come down the coast of, of, of Scotland and running by running lights and fog and what have you. And in the middle of the night, all of a sudden we hear a big crash. So we're sitting up on the top of a rock and this, uh, we wedged the rock I don't know, it was, it was big as my pep pickup truck. And we, it was jammed into the, 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 into the bow of the ship. So I think it was the next day they decided they was gonna send us, I think we went out to Newcastle, England, was going down to dry dock, they was gonna repair that. And they couldn't do nothing with it there, and a couple of days or a week later, they decided they sent us somewhere else and they decided that, th that they couldn't repair it. So they, they filled it in with concrete all around so that it wouldn't fall out. And that's when they sent us back across the Atlantic. We went all the way across the Atlantic with that. Little, the concrete. It was, was a little scary. I thought, if this thing falls out of there, we're done, you know. <laughs> but we made it. It was a scary kind of trip, but uh, I never heard so much creaking and crunching on a ship in my life. Uh, but, but we made it back to Elizabeth, New Jersey, and that's where I jokingly said we ought to take this stone out. We was going to call it the Blarney Stone and put it on, <laughs> put, it, put it on the land on in, in Elizabeth, New Jersey, and charge all the Irishmen fifty cents to come and kiss it. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the first ship you were on. Yeah. Okay, and then uh, you came ashore, and you were telling me a little bit earlier about the, the time off that you had. Why don't you explain in, in that a little bit? In England? Well, no, well, you right. said when you got time off, you said that you got, for so much time, you worked a month on and so many, day, so many days yeah. off. Yeah, well, for every day you were at sea, you are allowed two days ashore. And uh, I had built up, uh, I think, I, I'm not certain, seven, ten days or whatever. And I come home and of course things were very nice at home at that time. Uh, and uh, I, I stayed, I think, two days over. And I think they come and knocked on my door. Okay, now, now that was, the, you sailed on a couple of other yeah, merchant ships first, in, right? Yeah, in between there somewhere. And so you, this is, you're one of the ships you served on was called the Hat Creek? Hat Creek. Where did, where did that ship do? That, that That's the one that never went anywhere. It went down in the Gulf of Mexico, broke down, and... Uh, and what kind of ship was this? That was a tanker also. It was a tanker also, okay. And uh, it, uh, it broke down in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico for one place, and at that time, there were still German U-boats around in the Gulf of Mexico. Right. And we sit there for, I think, three days before they got the ship moving again. And that's when I went to Texas. We went to Texas and we loaded up and then we went back to Norfolk. I think I got this correct, it's been a long time. We went back to Norfolk and that's when I got off the ship. This thing is just too much problem. I'm kind of scared of it. Okay, and the next ship you owned was the Edmund Alexander. Yeah, the Edmund Alexander, that was a troop ship. That was a beautiful, luxury 
Japanese liner at one time. And it, it was actually, I think the name of it was the Empress of Japan. So that was a Japanese ship that had been sitting somewhere the yeah, Americans got a hold of it. Yeah, I don't know where it was captured, left here, or what it was, but, okay. but we ended up on it. It was a troop ship. And that they run troop ships run by themselves, or maybe with a destroyer escort or whatever. Fast else. enough that they didn't need yeah, convoys. Yeah, well they didn't want them convoys. They want to they, they, they loaded with all them troops, they want to get them over there and, right. and unload them and get back. So this was also serving the Atlantic yeah. theater. Yeah. I did all my service in the Atlantic. I never, never did get in a Pacific. So where did that load? Where did you load troops? Where did you discharge them when you were on the uh, the Edmund Alexander? Do you remember where you loaded? Yeah, that's where we took them to Newcastle, England, I think it was. And from where? They they, they come out of uh, yeah New York. Okay. And we went to, not Newcastle, um, that other, Liverpool. Okay. Liverpool, England, yeah. That, that's, yeah, that's where the troops went. I have a little time remembering this because it's so. That's okay. The things that, that, that happened back and then, some of them are clear as a bell, and other things, that, I don't know why you, for, you forget them, maybe. Now, what were you doing on, on, on those ships? Were you just, were you an ordinary seaman? I, I ended up. As, as what they called a mess cook. Okay. Okay, which, which I waited tables, done everything with food. Okay. And the reason I got in, that was the same reason I got in Merchant to start with. I found out that if you was a good mess cook, you took care of your crew and you fed them good, that when the ship, when, 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 the, when the cruise was over, I'm calling it a cruise, when the cruise was over, you got a nice tip from everyone. <laughs> they got they got paid all the money for all the time they were gone, except what they what what they would draw for what they wanted to spend. Right. So that was another. I was looking for the money. I guess I thought <laughs> I'm going to have to be here. Get all the money you can. <laughs> so you made one one trip on that ship. One trip. Yeah. Okay, that was your last merchant yeah. ship. Then tell us what happened, because uh, this I think is one of the most interesting things about your story. Are you? Referring to when I come home? Yes. <laughs> well, I come home and uh, being, uh, let's see, I guess I was 19 years old at the time. All, all the men here were gone, just about. And the, the girls were all over the place. I was having a ball. So I just, I almost forgot when I should have went back. <laughs> when I should have went back. Oops. <laughs> and like I said before, I think I think two days over my time, I, I I'm trying to remember whether they come to the door or how they got to me, but they got me. So that's when I went in the Navy. I went to Great Lakes, trained up there. So you immediately, I, I, two days over the time you were supposed to report back to be looking for a ship in the Merchant Marine. Yeah, they found you and yeah. said, well. Um, Uncle Sam brings you greetings, and uh... well, yeah, I, just, I, just, yeah, I, 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 I can't remember how that happened that they got to me, but I, I can imagine they come and knock on the door. That was uh -huh. a, that was a practice back then. They didn't, they didn't, they didn't, uh, they didn't trust they, they didn't the mail service. For you, you, they, they come and got you, you know. But, uh, so did you get it now? So you were drafted. Now, did you have any choice on what you could do, or did they say? Mr. Isles, you're going in the Navy. Well, I, I could have went in the, at the Army or the Navy, yes. Okay. They, did, they did give me a choice, I, I remember that. But uh, I had already been in a merchant marine in the water, so that's why I thought I'd go in the Navy. Okay, so they sent you to Great Lakes for training? Great. I went through the same boot camp that training that I went through for the merchant marine. This time you got it? Uh, yeah, I went through it twice. I, I got it both times. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so you went through basic, which you said is probably about six weeks at that point. Yeah, so that's what it was, six, uh, six or seven weeks, I'm not sure. And then was there any specialty training after that? You know, they, uh, did you get a specialty after that, or were you just... No. Okay. No, they, I, they, they sent me to uh, the Naval Air Station in Alameda. That's yeah. California. Yeah, via, I think we, we rode in freight cars all over the United States where we got there, but that was practice then. Mm -hmm. They never sent you right to where you was going, they sent you here, there, and everywhere. So I went to the I went to the Navy and, and went to Naval Air 
and that's where I spent all my Navy career. Actually, all was at at, at Alameda. Yeah, Alameda. Yeah. So even though you had all this experience at sea from the Merchant Marine, you were shore duty the rest for your entire right. naval career. Right. Yeah. I see. <laughs> I well, I thought when as soon as I went through uh, California, I thought you're here right out in the middle of the Pacific, but I never got there. And then after some time, the war was. Well, it was sort of getting, start, starting to wind down a little bit. Right. And there was more guys coming back. So I figured, well, I'm, I'm set. And I stayed, actually, I was there. You, you got out on the point system for every month you was in. And, and uh, So the point was, if you've been on a ship and you've been in combat and et cetera, yeah. by, that would speed up. Well, no, that didn't count as Navy points. Th these were Navy points for every month you was in, you got points and every, uh, if you was in certain battle zones, you got points right. for, and you build up so many points you went so home. So the tougher job you'd had yeah. by you were in, the sooner you could get out. Yeah, so I ended up a couple of months after the war was over, I was still in the service, everybody else was gone. Because yes, I he was, says you say you were still in the service in March of 46, so. Okay. okay. Quite a while. Okay. Yeah. Eight, nine months, something like yeah. that after the war, after the yeah, and see, and, and that also made a good duty because there wasn't nothing to do much. And I was, I worked in the mail room, and I messed that job up. A, I don't know where you want this. I'm just saying. <laughs> sure, go ahead. No, I, uh, I run and at the naval air station. I run the, uh, the mail service, the mail room. They had the mail. It went officer. It was in the officer's right. quarters, and I had a, uh, a little motor scooter with a sidecar on. That I used to drive around the base, pick up the mail, and then mm -hmm. you know, bring it over there. Well, I used to use that. Uh, we used to go to the movies, and I this particular night I took a, a, a wave to the movie, and I come out of the movie and I come out and run around the corner and I run into a car. What well, was a base commander's car? So that was well, you literally ran into. I it. ran into. <laughs> I went around the corner real quick. Well, and I had this beautiful young lady in the sidecar, and I guess I probably where my attention was. So I hit this guy and it's a base commander. Well, that was the end of my, uh, my mail order job. That was gone. What was your next, so what was your follow-up assignment? <laughs> uh, the the follow-up assignment, I then went to the tailor shop. <laughs> I was pressing suits. Okay. And uh, at that time, and I was working at the, uh, at the at the waves canteen serving drinks which was rather fun <laughs> you did have a rough career i can <laughs> well, see that a, well that's what i said after i went after i went in the navy it it, uh, it it wasn't horrible like it was supposed to be i there was a lot of it around but i i lucky i missed it all i guess and that was when you uh, right around the time you got your dream job Guarding the waves. Well, yeah, that was all part of that same time. That so tell us about guy. Tell us well, first of all, what are we talking about here? What was guarding the waves? Well, the, the, there was a. All the waves were on this one street. The waves, of course, being the women in, who were in right, the navy. Right. There's twelve. They they said twelve hundred of them. I don't know, but my job was to guard that street to keep whoever from going in there. People like yourself from going in there. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> you know who was in there. <laughs> there was a, no, I, mean, I had good duty. I used to walk for, I think, maybe four hours and then some time off. Well, they never could find me. So this actually was guard, I mean, it was real guard duty. Yeah, it was, was, was real guard duty. It was a yeah. semi-restricted area, yeah. as it were. Yes. And, yeah. But it was like having the fox guard the hen house. Sort of. Well, then, you know what the, what what a bunch of, well, I guess you could say, that, what a bunch of sailors, and twelve hundred girls. You know what that's going to be. Somebody has to protect them. <laughs> and you you rose to the uh, occasion and and well, kept I, them safe. Yeah, I was glad to help. <laughs> Let me ask you a question, go back to the Merchant Marine. Okay. From your experiences, did you ever um, have any knowledge of submarines in the areas? I'm mean, actually 
uh, when you were there? I mean, of course, everybody knew the submarines were out there, but I mean, did you have a case where, like in a convoy, where they said, you know, there's submarines in the area or? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we had. I remember one very weird thing about that. You know, I, I, I didn't feel that I was scared at that time. I think I was young and just didn't have sense enough to be scared. But I remember one night we had a general quarters and I was always, always combing my hair back then. I don't know why. But we got a general quarters and I was the last one up at the gun station. And they said, they told me this. I said, well, you sure combed your hair nice. Did you do that before you come up here? And I did. I stopped, and then I could vaguely remember when I heard that general quarters, this is an automatic run to your gun station. Why well, stop and comb my hair? I, I, okay. might, have, I might have shaved, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that... Uh, so, uh, did they, uh, did anybody say anything to you about your, your concern about your uh, coiffure rather than uh, yes, about manning the guns? Yes, I, I was uh, kind of the laughing stock of the... <laughs> for the rest of that trip. I think that was the one where we ended up in, yeah, that was the one, that was on that Cerro Gordo, I think. That's when we went across and ended up in Scotland. After, that's where they broke up the convoy, up in there someplace. So you, you think you were called to general quarters because they had, they thought there was a submarine yeah. in the area? Well, yeah, they blowed the whistles and, and that's, see, we, we had a Navy, we had Navy gun crews. Right, Navy, right. Navy, the, Navy, the, the Marine, 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 they're, they were supposed to be the ones that hit the thing. We used to have practice and they'd send tracers out or shoot with tracers. Right. Or, and we always outshot them. <laughs> now those ships, um, um, the tankers carried a gun forward or one forward and aft. Yeah. And they had, what are they, eight millimeter, uh, eight millimeters, I believe. Yeah, nine millimeters. Yeah, they had uh, one, two, I think four, four gun stations. Four guns. Yeah, okay. I remember right, yeah. I guess maybe some of them were. And those were retrofitted, because yeah. the ships you're talking about were built before the war. So I like yeah. the, the yeah. Liberty ships or the Victory ships that they were built with the gun emplacements on yeah. them and so on. Well, that's, yeah, they, that's what they did later on, yeah. That's that's what won the war, they said. We outproduced them, we outmanufactured them. There was a saying back then, I think it was Kaiser who used to build them ships, it says, if they sink one, we'll send two more. Right. And that was their motto, and I guess it worked. Yep, they produced a lot of ships, and that was, yeah. and, and a lot of material, and. Well, when they, when they early in, in the war, when, when them convoys were sending 100 ships and 30 or 40 of them, we all get through. But as it was getting later, as I'd getting in there, it was it was most of them getting through. They'd uh, yeah. broken the, the, the code and uh, yeah. um, had a whole lot more success. The Battle of the Atlantic was being won, and, yeah. uh, which was certainly a change. Of course, the Merchant Marines suffered terribly in the early part of the yeah, war. Casualties yeah, were horrendous. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting when you, of course, that's one of the reasons people got paid more. It was a whole lot, well, at least the early really, part of the war, yeah. was a lot more dangerous than yeah. most military service. Well, that and you're so. sitting on high octane gasoline, a whole yes. ship full of it. So. I don't know. Back then, it didn't seem like they had sense enough to be scared. <laughs> and of course, everybody was well, I think in something. Everybody, everybody was everybody scared. Everybody scared sometimes, I think. I'm more scared now driving down the road than I was then. <laughs> I'm right in the middle of a war. Uh, one of the blessings of youth is we're all in war. Yeah, right? yeah. sure. Wonderful, yeah. <clears throat> so, what else can you tell me? Any other, anything else that you remember from that time period you'd like to share? Not really, that's uh, what well, tell him about that. Um, didn't you tell me that the story about you you had a, a long leave coming up or something, or a lot of short time, and then 
there wasn't nothing at the place where you had to had to leave or something like that. You got off the ship and there was nothing there. Oh, oh tell that them that was, story. Um, oh, that was that that was that same. That all my uh, experiences were on a Cerro Gordo. That's the same thing. When they when they took us from one of these places to the other, had their ship repaired. We thought, oh boy, we're going to get when we get down there, we're going to get some least decent food because the food was running out. You know, you. you Where were you going? That was when we come out of Newcastle, England, and we went to Wall. I think they call it Wall's End. That was another place where right. they was trying to figure out how to repair the ship. Right. And so we thought we 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 going into the dry dock there. Good, we get good food. We have this and that and the other and everything. We pulled into this dock. It looked like it was four miles long. I never forget that. And and as far as you could see, there was a little box down at the end of the dock. And they pulled in, and you know they would go through the procedure, getting tied up, and all which takes some time. And everybody's looking down. At, you know we we expect them to bring a whole bunches of bananas and oranges and all kind of fresh stuff that we never had and they went down and got that box and brought it back and it was a case of hag and hag whiskey <laughs> and that was the same captain i shouldn't say this about him but he, he deserved it oh shit sure. yeah sure. that's the same captain that we suspected that was a little bit high when we run and got that rock mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> So you say when they ran in the uh, ran against rock, that was after they split up the convoy to go to some. But they were yeah. going in different directions. Yeah, yeah that's uh, I, if I if I didn't mention that's when we was coming down. I guess it would be the east coast of Scotland. They turned us around and sent us south, and that's when we suspicioned that we was going going to be an invasion. I don't know. There was all kind of scuttlebutt and rumors about that invasion but it hadn't started yet right. i think that's where we were headed mm -hmm. we were going in that direction maybe i'm lucky that we never made it all right right, right. but we still brought a blarney stone back <laughs> <laughs> so when you um you were in alameda so um, finally your points were enough that you could yeah i got out that you could get out yeah. came back here yeah i hitchhiked home hitchhiked home from california all the way home yeah I guess uh, in uniform that wasn't a hard was not a terribly hard task in that, no, no, that they, time. No, they picked you up a lot of times. We we had some exciting times on the way home. But it was a, it was interesting hitchhiking across the country. It wasn't very interesting. Yeah, but it was. I, in fact, I, I hitchhiked all the way to Chicago, and I rode the train from Chicago to Cincinnati. I don't know why, but I'll never forget that where we lived. The train went past uh, our little neighborhood, and then it went on to the Union Terminal. And I jumped off of the train down there. By I threw my seat bag off and jumped <laughs> off. That way, Sedansville. Sedansville, real close to where I lived. So, what, at that point, were you completely out of the Navy, or were you? Yeah, I was discharged. I got dis okay. discharged okay. in uh, Shoemaker, California. Okay. And you got your, like your, your out, money and, and, must, they, they, and your ruptured duck. Yeah. And me and this other guy said, let's, let's just hitchhike back. We didn't want to hurry. We, you know, and, didn't really, it didn't have much of a plan yeah. at that no, juncture. No, we, we didn't care. We went up through St. Salt Lake City and finally made it home. But it was good to be home. It really <laughs> was. And how long had it been since you'd been to, to Cincinnati before you, before you got drafted? Uh, or what, at the it, moment you entered, it, it was a little less than two years. See, I went to California and Rico back home. Right. I never could come up with enough money out here. I spent it too fast. And I never did have enough money to come home. Right. So I just stayed out there. It didn't make my mother very happy, but. But when it was over and done, was she did let you come home? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, that was good of her. Yeah. That was good of her. Yeah. Yeah, that's when I threw the seat bag on and jumped off the train. Was she a little surprised when you uh, knocked on the door? Yeah, the, 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 but the train is going pretty slow. <laughs> but mom was, uh, mom was okay, was happy seeing you. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we had the, well, we had practice of jumping off them trains. See, we, we were raised in a neighborhood where there's a lot of trains and it wasn't another usual jump on a train, to, a freight train to go someplace. And when you got there, you jumped off. 
that was about old the hat to him. Huh? I said it was old hat to you to jump off the train. Yeah, well, that was about the end of my military career. Well, terrific. Well, um, anything else you'd like to share with us? Well, you've certainly said quite a bit. I certainly appreciate it. On behalf of the Public Library of Cincinnati, Hamilton County, and ultimately the Library of Congress, we'd like to thank Mr. Earl W. Isles for coming and speaking to us about his experiences in both the Merchant Marine and the United States Navy during the Second World War. Thank you.